like it. Mm. I'm not sure that I like it. Hello, everybody. It is almost seven o'clock, Monday night. It's Mary Amick at Yard Art or Us. How are y'all? Is everybody doing okay? We're gonna do uh, three things we're gonna paint. Actually, I'm gonna paint, you're gonna watch me paint. I'm gonna do an acorn. I'm gonna do a leaf with a pumpkin. And we're just gonna do a leaf, okay? So just three small things. So leaf. Hey Joyce, how are you? Uh, leaf with a pumpkin and acorn. So I don't know if any of you've had a chance to see what I posted this morning on Facebook, but it won't take me long to paint these three things. You'll know I can paint pretty fast, so that's not gonna take long. So I thought I would use tonight as a good time uh, to kind of go over uh, what I think is a lot of confusion about polying, how to apply poly, what should I do, how much to use, and so I'm going to kind of go through, hey, Lisa, how are you? Hey, Miss Victoria. Hi, Debbie. So glad y'all could join me. So I'm going to go through these things pretty quick because they're small, right? We have three of them. It's not going to take long. And we're going to do that. And then we're going to have kind of like a tutorial on what I get asked, I think, probably the most about. And that is uh, polying and top coating and finishing and glittering and that sort of thing. And oftentimes I get a lot of questions about that. And the question will start out with, well, what kind of poly should I use? And I tell them, and then they'll say, well, how much should I use? Then I answer that. And then they'll say, well, how do I know if too much is too much and too little is too little? Then I try to answer that. So I just decided we're gonna do a whole lesson on polying. I think, I think the teacher in me has gotten it down to the point where I've got lots of examples to show y'all on that. So for those of you that are watching it, if y'all could help me when people ask that question in the group, if you could tag them and say, Mary covered that in this video, I think what I'll do is I'll take this video later and I'll put it in announcements maybe, if I think I could do that. And I'll put a title there, everything you need to know about how to poly, uh, because I get so many questions about that. So I think there's a lot of confusion. So I have one, about three or four examples to show y'all just over polying and that's it. So let's do this. We're gonna do our acorn first. So I did uh, two coats of reindeer brown. Didn't take long because this is not a big piece. And then I did one good top coat of nutmeg. Hey Carla, how are you? I'm so glad you could join us. Uh, hey Ashley. So I did two coats of reindeer brown and a good coat of nutmeg. On this, two coats of reindeer brown. And then two coats of reindeer brown and then a coat of my light orange, which I think is number 16, and then Christmas green. So, all right, like I do most everything, I'm gonna start with my shader, which is what I call a shader. It's really a, a flat tip brush, but I call it a shader. And I'm gonna start with some shading brown. Hey, it's actually written on there for me, Thir uh, 34 shading brown. So I have three small pieces here, pretty simple. I'm gonna do uh, my shading brown and I'm gonna bring it in here like so. And at first, uh, what I always do is I just kind of follow the curve of my piece, right? And that's just, you know, that, that outline. So I'm not gonna do a whole lot on this guy. I'm gonna do a little bit more up here. I'm gonna let that set over there for a minute. And then add the same thing on this guy. I'm gonna kind of go up and down. Now, on some of this, I did not, because I shade, I uh, base coat with a roller, I didn't do the uh, sides. The roller wouldn't fit in there, so I'm gonna do the sides right now. Do that right quick. And I'm gonna put some in there, yeah. Just enough to cover it in there to kind of help protect that side. All right. So I'm gonna take this shading brown, number 34, and I'm using, I think it's the number, ooh, I don't know, y'all. This is a number 10. I've got so much junk on this brush, who knows? And I'm just gonna kinda go out like so. I'll 
come back up. And I'm gonna do a little bit here on the stem of my pumpkin, not a whole lot. Just kind of come around. This guy needs to kind of come like so, I would think. I'm just kind of doing a little bit of a freehand here. We've got uh, some more stuff to do as far as coming in here with the uh, script liner. There we go. Gotta let that sit over there. It's kind of the same thing right here. Now, I, I use the uh, reindeer brown as my base coat. If you would rather have something a little more red, you could always do, I think, uh, barn red would look good too. You know, a little bit more fallish reddish looking. I stuck with the, the reindeer brown. That's kind of my go-to on stuff like that. And I'm going to do just like I did earlier on that one. Um... I'm just going to go around the corners of it, or the uh, edges, if you will. I know uh, shading is probably the more difficult thing for most folks, but if you notice that when I shade, I don't really go slow. I tend to go pretty fast. I find that the slower I go on shading, the more difficult it is for me. So, And also, I think the trick to shading is I'm really not moving my fingers you notice I'm moving my shoulder and my elbows, what's moving. So I'm going to come over here like so. And I'll probably do that. Put a little bit more paint on there. Make this one a little bit more pronounced. Now, I'm kind of done with that shader. Let me do that. I need a smaller shader. So what I'm gonna do is I've got this one, it's a number 12. I'm gonna let that dry for a second. And I'm going to put some, I don't have a whole lot in here, so I better put some more in here. This is the uh, 17 shading orange. Let's see, shading orange, here we go. And I'm gonna squeeze a little bit in here this guy's kind of little, so I'm not going to put a whole lot of paint on this brush. And I'm going to do that. I'm just going to kind of go down here. And in the middle, I tend to kind of go just a little bit up and down. Kind of a, so give it some space in there. And then on the outside, I'll give it a continuous shade here. And I'll do that, that, that. Now, I'm not going to worry about shading in here because this is so such a small area. But what I will do is I'll take my script liner and I'll use a script liner, but I'll use this dark green. I won't necessarily shade it. I'm really outlining is what I'm doing. And I'll just come in here and do something like that. Not a whole lot. There's, there's not a whole lot to this guy. That's why I thought tonight would be a good night to spend a little bit of time on everything you need to know about polying. There's a lot of confusion, I think, about that, and I think we can clear that up, hopefully. The optimist in me thinks we can, so we're sure gonna give it a try. And I might do this, just kind of make very small strokes. Not a whole lot. Just kind of small strokes. Now, because this leaf is needs some, what I would, I would say needs a little bit of help. There's not a whole lot to it. So I'm going to go with a little bit of scarecrow white. Doesn't mean I'm not gonna use any white, but I'm gonna go with some scarecrow white. Hey, Miss Mary, those shading moves you got. Yeah. Boy, isn't that the truth. I really think of when you're shading, if you will um, just shade and don't, I think that what people do is they think that if they go slow, they're gonna be more precise. And it's almost the opposite, for at least for me. Um, yeah, it's, it's, how about I put the camera down here? Is that better, Ash? 
Can you see that now? So when I'm uh, doing stuff like that, I tend to kind of go fast. I'm going to kind of come in here and I'm going to go kind of close to what I did there. And you can see it's a very thin, subtle, not trying to do anything, very thick. This is a scarecrow white and I'm just kind of coming in over here. And I might even do this a little bit up here. Now what I am gonna do, I'm gonna do something on this nutmeg. Uh, if you try to shade this nutmeg, which we could do, it doesn't show up that much. Uh, hey, Miss Kathy, how are you? She says your videos are always, I hope so. I hope so. That's, uh, I was just saying earlier, we're gonna do all kinds of, I'm gonna do a uh, tutorial on polying because the people ask me questions about polying and they're like, can I poly my stuff at home? Well, you can do anything you want. Uh, the answer I give is you can do whatever you want, but if you're asking me my opinion of should you do that, I need to look at the piece because everything matters. Hey, Kelly, that y'all, that's my sister, Kelly. She's uh, the oldest one and always the boss is what she says or what she thinks. She might not always say that. I just kind of, I always call this a cross hatch. I don't really know if that's the right thing. I don't try to make it look perfect. In fact, you want it to kind of look not so perfect. That's the whole point of it. And then I think I'll just do this. I'm going to come back a little bit with some, um, uh, shading red. So I've got my um, trusty little script liner. Oh, I think this is shading red. It ain't looking too good. I don't know about this. I'm going to try it. We're going to see. Oh, I think what it is, I, this is some shading red that I mixed with barn red on for a different project, but I like it, so I'm going to use it. So hey, there you go. But you can use shading red, no problem. And I'm just kind of staying right here on the outside. I'm not trying to cover up a lot. In fact, I'm trying to get a very thin uh, outline on here just so that we really can show off that um, shading brown. You don't want to cover all that up. And I will just come in here. And this is, like I said, this is shading red that I mixed with some barn red, I think. But you can definitely use just the regular shading red, no problem. He's just a little acorn. There's not much to him. So he won't take very long to finish. And that's about it. That's all I'm going to do to my little acorn. There's not a lot to him, but I think he's super cute. Simple, pretty easy, no big deal. Now I have a leaf. Ashley says, how many? Oh. I have three, there's Kelly, she's the oldest, there's Paula, she's second, and then I'm number three, and then my sister Connie uh, is number four. And we all like to talk, a lot. So you can only imagine what that's like when we're all together. Okay, I'm just gonna outline this, making that brush go where I want it to go, right? And like I said, you could do whatever background color you wanted. A barn would, a barn uh, red would look good on this. You could even do a yellow and kind of make them like the golds. You could do a green. I mean, it's a leaf, so it could be just about any color you can think of. Okay, I'm gonna do this. I am just outlining this, guys, all I'm doing with my script liner. I see a little spot in there. I didn't get some paint on the side. I'll just kind of come in here and give it a little bit of personality is what I say. I'm just giving it some brush strokes in here. I'm not trying to be perfect. Okay. And then we're gonna do this guy. Same, almost the same leaf. We just covered him up over here with some pumpkin. So not a whole lot to him. And it won't be long and I'll be through with this little guy and we'll move on to polying. I'm not sure what it is about polying, but that sure seems a lot, a lot of confusion about that. 
but we're gonna address that tonight. We'll get that fixed up. And notice, like when I'm moving, I'm moving that whole shoulder and that uh, elbow. I'm not really moving my fingers. Getting that brush to go where I want it to go, hopefully. Let's go here. Like so, there we go. And again, I'll just kind of come in here a little bit and just kind of do it a little bit like that. Just a little bit of a wisp. Now I'm gonna go ahead and on this pumpkin, this is my outline orange, which I think is, I'm sorry, red orange number 19. Red orange number 19. So I'm kinda, I'm just going in there right there where that CNC is grooved down in there. And I'm just kinda making that paint go down in there. Now here in the middle, on these, I just kind of pick up the brush and go up and down some. Okay, we're gonna put some white on these guys and I believe that'll be it. So let's do some white. Again with my script liner and the white. Hey Kimberly, how are you? Let's all, uh, yeah, get us all together. Who knows what's gonna happen? Like most sisters, we all think we're right, you know. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of white in here, just kind of give it a little bit more brightness. And I'll come in here and there. Nice and simple. Mm -hmm. Probably all my glitter pieces is my final step I need to do, but I haven't gotten to the store to get the spray. Hey, then today's kind of good for you, Kimberly, because I'm gonna do a lesson here in a minute and we're gonna go A to Z, everything you need to know about Polly. And then some, okay? I'm gonna put a little bit of white on this guy and I'm just kind of coming over here where I've got that um, scarecrow white. There's my leaf. Not much to him, okay? And then I'll put just a little bit over here. on my little acorn. And I think that's all I would do. So, let me find my little lid. Y'all can hear the dogs outside. Somebody had the nerve to show up in my driveway. All right, so here's my acorn. Here's my leaf with my pumpkin. And here's just my single leaf. All right, hold on guys, just a second and we're gonna start pollying. put this in here. I'm going to shove all this other stuff out of the way, hopefully. I have too much junk in the way, y'all. Okay. couple things about polying. Whenever I'm talking about painting, I always have kind of this lackadaisical attitude that, hey, um, you know, if you get it messed up on paint, no worries, sand it off, paint over it, wait till it dries, paint over it, no big deal. And I still feel that way. Um, so, hey Carla, how are you? I'm so glad you could join us. And could we talk about the pumpkin challenge? Absolutely, absolutely, I'll do that. So, here's the deal. When we're talking about Polly, hold on, I keep trying to get all my supplies together, y'all. I thought I had this right here and somebody took it. Okay. When we're talking about poly, it can be uh, more temperamental than paint. So when you're polying, you've got several scenarios. If you have a piece like this, for example, this tree, let's pretend for a minute that this tree, I wanna put poly on it, but I do not want any glitter. It's not something I wanna glitter. For whatever reason, I'm just gonna put uh, poly on it. That's it. In that case, what I tend to do 
is I tend to use something like this because if you just want to poly something and you don't want to worry, you're not putting glitter on it, you just want a, a poly coat on there, then you've got to kind of be a little careful about the fact that since you're not pulling, putting any glitter on there, you want to make sure your poly doesn't uh, bubble up or get too much air bubbles in it, right? So uh, what I do, this is like a, I don't know, I call it a wall painter. You can get it at any home improvement store. And I don't know, they're my, I don't know, they're five bucks or whatever there. And then this is uh, removable. You can get this out and wash it and then put it back in this little pad. So I use this and I'll just kind of put this on here, the poly. So the poly goes on a little cloudy, right? And you don't want to put too much, but you also don't want to leave, uh, you know, you don't want to put not enough. So this is very dry, okay? So I'm going to just kind of sit here and rub it in there for just a second, and I'm gonna move that poly where I want it. And I'm pretty happy in the fact that I think I've got a, the right amount on here, and I'm just moving it back and forth. Just, that's all I'm doing. I wouldn't put any more than what I put on here. I think Ashley explained it really well. One day she said, think of it as glazing a donut. I mean, everybody, who doesn't like a donut? I love donuts, but, um, yeah, if you can make it, well, I'm going to get to that. That's a very good question, Renee, good question. But if you uh, want to put some glaze on your donut, that's good, but you don't want your donut swimming in the glaze. You want to make sure that you've got just that right amount. And to me, I have just the right amount on this guy, and I'm pretty happy with that. Now, the reason I didn't use a roller on this guy, if you use a roller, that's um, the poly can get uh, sometimes air bubbles in there, okay? Okay. And the thing about poly is this, it's more temperamental than paint. So what I do is there's several things you need to think about. I do not poly or glitter anything on a wet day or on a day that there's no sunshine or on a day that it might rain or on a day that it's really cold and gonna rain. I only poly, like in the winter, a lot of times I poly inside my house underneath a ceiling fan. It might be cold in the house because it's winter and it's cold. I still turn on my ceiling fan because I want this poly to get some air going on it. It doesn't have to be a huge fan, but a ceiling fan. Now you can do it outside. Obviously, if it's hot outside, you could do that. So, you know, what do you want to make sure is that this poly doesn't sit here for hours and not dry. If it sits here for hours and it doesn't dry, you're gonna have a problem because it will dry like a cloud and it, there's nothing you can do to fix that. So the question came up just a while ago, if I make a mistake on my glitter, can I redo it? Well, it depends on the mistake. If it is something that you have a big cloud all over this, you're gonna to have to sand this down and almost start all the way over again. So in that case, I think you're gonna just have to sand it off. So you don't wanna poly on a day that it's wet. You're gonna to have to poly in the house if you do that. Uh, you don't wanna poly when it's raining and you want air moving on this. Y'all can't see it, but I have a ceiling fan right over here and I'm gonna set this aside. And that ceiling fan is probably my best friend because it's gonna make the air move and it's gonna make this dry. Because if the poly sits here for five, six, seven hours and it doesn't dry, it's gonna turn milky and cloudy and it's gonna ruin your project, okay? So just to recap, if it's something that you do not want to put glitter on, I would just put a thin coat, do something like this and rub it wherever you want and let it dry either outside on a warm sunny day or underneath the ceiling fan if you're in the house. So that's one scenario of how to poly. So y'all go ahead and pop any questions you have about this. We're gonna to go to another scenario in a minute. Yeah, uh, Ashley's saying colder, cooler temps will make, it, will, will make it crackle. Yeah, that's true. So poly is just more temperamental, so you gotta be a little more careful with it. It doesn't mean you won't be successful. There's just a few things you're gonna to have to do. Now, Kim says she's been using a foam brush to do your poly. Now, Kim, if you are happy with that, because a foam brush will put less amount of poly on there than what a napped, a regular napped fabric brush. So if you're having good luck with the foam, I don't see anything wrong with that. Ashley, if you could pop in here and let me know. I think Ashley may use a foam roller on her projects that she doesn't put glitter on. I'm not sure, but she'll answer that in a minute. But I use this when I'm not glittering something. You know, that's what I use. 
Um, so we'll see if Ashley, uh, Kim, let me know, are you having luck with your foam brush when you do that? And Ashley, let me know, are you using a foam roller? Y'all could answer those two questions, that would be good. So we've got this ready to go because it's just gonna dry underneath my ceiling fan over here, okay? And then we're gonna go to another scenario. So this is one scenario where you just want poly with no glitter. That's scenario number one. Okay, now let's suppose you have a scenario where you do want, uh, Ashley says she does use foam on her fall pieces and that has a foam pad. It, Debbie, I don't even think it, it I don't think it's a foam pad, but I think, but it, it doesn't feel like foam. It feels like little hairs in here. Uh, so that's the best way I could answer it, if that, if that helps. Kind of like little hairs in there, okay? Uh, Victoria says she's used a foam roller. So if you're having luck with foam roller, Ashley said she uses a foam roller on her fall pieces. Ashley and I, what, what she's saying is on pieces that she doesn't put glitter, she uses a foam roller. Uh, Miss Victoria said she uses a foam roller, so those sound like good scenarios. I've never used a foam roller, so not sure. Okay, now let's suppose for a minute that we've got this same project. I actually have two or three of them here tonight. This is a project that we want to put glitter on, which is what most people are going to do for their Christmas stuff, okay? Uh, so she, Kim says she's had a medium-sized foam brush. She dips it in the poly and it's been working good. Okay, that's good to know. So foam roller, foam brush, or something like this. Any of those will get you by, okay? Again, just make sure you put it under a ceiling fan and let it dry or outside in the heat. Now, I'm going to use a roller in this case, okay? A while ago, I just said we're not gonna use a napped roller. Now we are, okay? So this is a small nap roller. I would say this is probably about a 3 8 inch nap. Um, she says she also only paints her polys outdoors in the elements. Let's see what the rest of it says. I can't read the rest of the comment, but anyway. So um, this is a small, uh, when I say a small roller, I'm not saying the length of it. I mean the nap on it is thin. So let me put it to you like that. Now, you know you can get some of those rollers that the nap on it is way out here. Now, that's what you would use for painting the walls or of your house or painting a base coat or a primer coat. You could do that. Uh, but you want a thin napped roller is how I do it when I put poly on for glitter. So let me get the glitter. Y'all know that uh, we've told y'all before that Ashley and I use nothing but the mixture, right? So that's the mixture. So I have got a roller in this case. Now, in this case, I'm using a roller because I want to go fast. It doesn't mean you have to, but I do. Now, I don't care in this case about is my roller going to make air bubbles or not. Not important right now because those air bubbles will never be seen because of the fact that I'm putting glitter on here. If you're not putting glitter on here, those air bubbles may be important. If they're seen, you might not like that. So I only use a roller when I know I'm gonna to top it off with glitter. So I roll it everywhere that you see, and then I just go ahead and sprinkle my glitter on like I've showed y'all before. And then the trick to the glitter to me is put as much as what you like, okay? So this is about normally how much I put on there. If you like more, you could do that. If you like less, you could do that. Uh, on the glitter pieces and some regular poly. Okay, so Ashley's saying for me, this is kind of the same thing. She uses that thin napped roller on items that you know you're gonna do glitter on, okay? So here's the thing, and you can kind of see it. Now, I'm not through with this, because remember, after this dries, I have to put a top coat of poly on top of my glitter. Again, I'll do that using a roller. I'll set this aside and I'll come back and do that tonight before we uh, stop, okay? But let me set this aside. Okay, now we have another scenario. So let's suppose for a minute that you've got, this is something that Ashley and I will call a solid glitter piece. And what that means is, is that everything you see on here is every paint that's on here has been covered by glitter. Every square inch of this piece has been covered, the paint has been covered by the glitter. Now this is not wet anymore, obviously, or I wouldn't be touching it. 
but um, sometimes people will say, <clears throat> well, uh, you know, can I put uh, poly on my yard art at home? And the next thing I'm gonna say is, well, send me a picture of what we're talking about because how you poly this and how you poly the other two scenarios I showed you earlier are very different, okay? So on this kind of scenario, what we do is we have a big gun hooked up to a compressor and we blow it with this stuff right here, okay? Ignore the words back paint because right now it's back paint in here, but y'all know this is what Ashley and I have used all these years and is the crystal clear gloss. We put that in a gun and we spray that with a gun on top of our glitter. Now, most people are not gonna have a uh, gravity fed gun at home, nor are they gonna have a compressor, and you don't have to have that. You can get by with doing something like this. Now, I'm not brand particular. It doesn't mean it has to be Rust-Oleum. Find something that you like, it can be Rust-Oleum. But what I am particular about is that you make sure it says a, uh, somewhere on here, this right here says glossy finish. Make sure whatever you use has a glossy finish because if you have something with a semi-gloss or a satin finish, it's gonna make this whole thing turn dull. So what you wanna do is you would just, y'all can hear that thing going back and forth, the little ball in there. And of course you're gonna uh, sit here and do this over and over and over for a little bit. You're not gonna do this indoors like I am tonight for the purposes of this video. You're gonna do this outdoors. And again, you wanna make sure you do it on a sunny, bright, warm day, or spray it outside and bring it in and let it sit under a ceiling fan all night till you wake up in the morning. That's what I do, okay? And when you do this, you're not gonna get close to it like this and start spraying because when you do, then if you did the name, all of that's gonna get jacked up, okay? or if this is still halfway wet, this is gonna get messed up. You're gonna hold it about, I'd say about six to eight inches, and you're gonna do this. You're gonna put some coat, just, you're gonna coat it, okay? What I would do is I would coat it, something like that, and call that, that's my first coat. Let it dry for an hour or so, if it's a warm day, just an hour, and I would do this, the same thing, two to three times. The reason you're gonna have to do it two to three times using this, whoo, y'all, that stuff stinks. Whoo, Lord have mercy. Is you're, unlike when we use that big compressor with the gun, we, the, if you could just see the cloud of poly that just hits this piece, it's a lot of poly. So we only do it once. But you can see when you're getting this out, you're not getting a whole lot out at one time. You're getting a little bit out. So that's how you're gonna do it. So when you talk about uh, how do I poly this? This is very different than the first two scenarios that I showed you. So if it's a solid glitter piece, here's your go-to piece, okay? If it's not, then you can either use a foam roller or a regular nap roller. Here's what you're gonna use. Forget the words back pain, because that's, I have back pain in here. That's what I do, okay? And that'll kind of hopefully, uh, no, I don't want you to poly over glitter using a roller uh, no, don't use a roller over this. Do not roller over this. The whole point of this is that you're not using a roller. So when you're doing this, you wanna make sure, and the reason, that's a good question, I'm glad Kim said that. The reason you don't wanna roller this, if you roller this, think about this. This green is up higher than this white. So the green's up higher, the white's down lower. Let's suppose, especially you just finished doing this green maybe three, four, five, six hours ago. I'll tell you right now, this green is not gonna cure for probably about three weeks. It'll dry, but being dry and being cured are very different. You start taking a roller over this and you start going back and forth, especially if this green as thick as it is on here or this white, I call it the white outline or this green uh, name. You start rolling over that, you're gonna flatten that out and that paint's gonna come out from underneath that green glitter and it's gonna do a little bit of a fleck and you're gonna have nothing but a mess, you know? So you wanna make sure when you do not, we never roller poly on top of these solid glitter pieces. We never do that. I don't think in the 30 years that I've done that, I've ever, I've ever done that. So on your solid glitter, this is what you use. No roller, no foam roller, no napped roller, nothing. You want it in spray form. Because the spray 
is what's gonna sit on top of that glitter, but yet not harm the glitter either. You start rollering this, you're gonna have a mess on your hands. So hopefully that, you know, that makes some sense, or, you know, kind of helps people understand this is kind of how we do it, because for whatever reason, there seems to be most confusion about poly. So let me go get the glitter tree that I glittered a little earlier, because I want to show you how to put that top coat of poly on. Okay, <laughs> we're going to pretend for a minute that um, we are, um, this is totally dry. Hey, Lauren, how are you? So glad you could join us. Hey, Sandy, how are you? Do I use the poly on the sides and the backs? I don't, but thank you for asking, Sandy, because I should have addressed that. I don't poly the sides. I don't poly the backs. It doesn't mean you can't, but my, my reasoning behind that is you got to remember, I'm using something that costs 40 bucks a gallon, okay? It, and that's not cheap. And uh, as far as the sides go, I paint them, which really does help protect them. But the whole reason that I use MDO, medium density overlay, and I pay the price for that, is it's an outdoor signboard material. So the poly is really about making the face of the piece look good. And, and the fact that it layers over the paint and helps protect the paint, that's good. But the poly's really not gonna protect the MDO in the long run, but the MDO really doesn't need that much protection because it's meant to be outdoors anyway. Let me, let me clarify something. If I were using a regular plywood material, like, you know, a pine plywood that you get at Home Depot or a birch uh, plywood, because I used to use birch years ago, uh, if I were using those sorts of materials, I probably would just for an added layer, put some poly on the sides and on the backs because those materials are really meant for indoor, not outdoor use. So uh, I don't poly the sides and I don't poly the back because the MDO doesn't really need it. Uh, but yes, it can withstand snow and rain. That's the whole point of using a signboard material. We live in South Texas. It doesn't really snow here, but man, the humidity is, is just horrible here. And so that moisture day in and day out, whether you get a torrential rain or a light rain, or just the fact in our case that we've got so much humidity, if you don't use the signboard material, I promise you in this part of the world, your plywood's gonna fall apart, may take a year, may take two years, may take three, but it's not gonna last. And that's just because it's not meant to be outdoors. So anyway, but that's a, that's a good thought, Sandy. I'm glad you brought that up. I didn't think to talk about the sides of the back being polyed or not. So let's pretend for a minute that this is dry. It's really not, but we're gonna pretend that it is, okay? And I'm gonna put about the same amount of poly that I did the first time. I'm just gonna kinda, of, me, I keep it in this thing because I use so much of it. I just kind of gonna do it like that. I think that's about enough. And I'm gonna roll her this way. And I like to roll her vertical, if you will, and then horizontal too, okay? It's the same thing when you're painting the walls of your house, you kind of go up and down the wall like this, and then you go like this. Why do I do that? I do that because I know if I keep doing that, I'm gonna get that, that um, poly everywhere, which is what I want. I want that poly everywhere. The poly is really, in this case, is to protect the glitter, not to protect the MDO. I mean, if it protects the MDO, that's not gonna hurt anything, but it's really to protect the glitter. And you can see now, I am finished as far as the poly and glitter of this tree. We are done, totally, totally done. Um, so it's okay to roller poly on with this one. Yes, because this is, I'm glad you said that, Kim, because this is not what we consider a solid, glitter piece. A solid glitter piece would be something like this where you cannot see any paint. You only see glitter. Don't roller this, spray it, okay? But when you are dealing with a glitter top coat, you're gonna poly, you're gonna glitter, and then you're gonna poly again. And yes, I use a roller on these. Hopefully that helps, but that's, I'm glad Kim said that. You guys are awesome because you're bringing up things that I just don't even think to, uh, to talk about. And I need to, I need to talk about all of that. So hopefully that helps uh, some of the confusion about polying and about what to do, when to use a roller, when to, what kind of roller do I use, all that kind of stuff. So if you see people asking about that in the group, if y'all could uh, 
have them come to this video. I'll try to put it in announcements and I'll try to label it if I can. Everything you need to know about polying or polying 101, but hopefully that helps uh, clear up. Because when people ask, uh, can I poly my piece? They think they're asking a simple question, but I know it requires a fairly complicated answer, which means, which is kind of what I did today, scenario number one, scenario number two, scenario number three, because all of those things matter. And if you're doing a solid glitter piece, which is this, I know that I do not want you rollering this on here. I want you only spraying it, which for most people is gonna be this. If you're doing a glitter top coat, then I know if you're gonna do the glitter top coat, oh, you can use this roller and just roller, roller, and then put your glitter on, let it dry, then roller, roller some more, and you're good to go. Um, and then if you are doing nothing but just a uh, top coat, like something with no glitter at all, I use this, or you can use a foam roller. And of course, you only put one, one uh, coat of that on there. I don't put two coats. If it's just something with no glitter, I don't put two coats of poly, I put one. Okay, to clarify, it's okay. So basically, if you're doing just glitter as an overlay on the paint, it's okay to use a roller. You got it, yes. But if it, yes, I can't see the rest of your comment, but yes, Kim, I'm glad you said that. Uh, if you're, uh, if it's a painted piece like this and you're just doing that glitter top coat, just roll, roll, roll to your heart's correct. Very good. Thank you, Kim, that really helped. Really. Hey, between all of us, we can kind of hopefully get it all figured out. Because uh, I have it up here, y'all, but that doesn't mean it comes out here correctly. <laughs> okay, so, hey, Duana, how are you? Great info. One day you can do a garden. Hey, that's true. You know, it's so, you know, life is so funny because when you do something for so many years, you think when you get on there, I'm going to explain it. And then, oh, well, you know, everybody's going to get it. But, you know, I know that when I'm trying to learn something new, Sometimes I really just have to have somebody say it to me about five times before it really just kind of sinks all in here. But yes, uh, the wood is called medium density overlay, not MDF, but MDO. MDF will fall apart. That's just the way it is. Not hating on MDF. It's a cheaper material. It has a lot of good uses for indoor, but uh, not for outdoor. Medium density overlay. Solid glitter like the presents in the stockings use spray poly. You got it. Yep, use the spray on the solid glitter things that you don't see any paint on. You just see glitter. You got it. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, so I think we got that. Thanks to you guys, y'all were able to ask questions that I didn't even think to um, address. Now, we're going to talk about the pumpkin challenge. We've been advertising the pumpkin challenge. The pumpkin challenge is just a very quick way for us to hopefully do a couple of things different than what we've done before. The pumpkin challenge is only gonna be, it's what I call very lickety split and quick. We have it for three days, which is the 25th, the 26th, the 27th. My lives are literally gonna last 10 minutes on each one. Very quick. Oh, Sandy says, I'm glad I found you guys. Well, Sandy, we're glad you found us too. Tell all your friends about us. Uh, we're doing a pumpkin challenge next Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And all it is is a very quick way that I'm going to show you every single step of everything you're gonna need to know about yard art, but I'm doing it on something simple. So the idea is, is something simple. We're gonna talk about each step. It's gonna be quick. It's, and for some of you who've been following us for a long time, you're gonna go, okay, I, I, I kind of know all that. Uh, maybe you'll learn something that you didn't learn, didn't know. But like I said, the lives are only gonna be 10 to 15 minutes, three days in a row, that's it. And I'm gonna show you any, I'm gonna show you about the metal rod that we really don't talk about in here. The MDO, I'm sorry, the Coro steel. I'm gonna talk about that. We're gonna paint the back, we're gonna paint the front. Of course, we're gonna do shading, we're gonna do polying, we're gonna do outlining. And uh, it's it's just on the little pumpkin. In fact, I think I'm hold on a minute, I think I got the pumpkin back here. Behind my little fake, uh, what do you call it? Backdrop. I'm gonna show you how to do some shading on this little guy. And uh, that's really all it is. And uh, I think we have some folks in here who like to watch us, which is good, but we wanna encourage people not just to watch, we wanna encourage people to pick up that paintbrush and do something, you know, just kind of challenge yourself in a different way. I know um, I say that like it's really easy, but I'm gonna give you a couple examples of how I've been challenging myself. Obviously, I know how to paint, 
So we're good to go on that. But y'all, there's a lot of things I don't know. So today I was on a Zoom conference call with a girl who's teaching myself and Connie on how to build a Pinterest account. And uh, man, I mean, we've got to learn keywords for the Pinterest boards. We've got to learn uh, the strategy to get the keywords or the topics for the pins. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that we're trying to learn. And um, so don't just think I'm sitting here saying, okay, well, anybody can learn to paint. Yes, you can learn to paint. You have to put some work in it. But uh, hopefully, we're going to have for about 15 minutes, three days in a row, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about yard art, what, what I call yard art 101, beginning to end in a very easy format. How long is a good time to let the final poly on top of the coat of glitter? Okay, that's a good question. Um, okay, Ashley's, let's do it this way. Good question. So how long do we let the glitter or poly dry? It depends on the weather. So let me give you a couple scenarios. Kim lives kind of in the same area that we live in. If it's July, you're outside, it's in the sunshine, this stuff will probably dry in about 30 minutes to an hour. If it's in your house, it's in the winter time, it's on a cold winter night, and all you really got going for you is the ceiling fan maybe, I would say let it dry all night, okay? Um, so it's um, it depends on the weather. It depends on how much of an, a, a ceiling fan or a fan you have on it. So the answer is it could take around an hour-ish to maybe all night. What I do in my art room, if it's wet outside, at night, I'll come in here and I'll put that final coat on, say at nine o'clock at night, because if I've had a long day, I haven't got a chance to do anything. And I just leave my ceiling fans on all night and I just get up the next morning and we are good to go. So anywhere from an hour to 24 hours, depends on the weather. I hope that that helps. Uh, but as, as you do it more, Kim, you'll get an idea for it. Here's a couple of cues. If it's still milky looking the way this is, I don't know if you can see it, it's not dry. If you touch it and you still feel some dampness, it's not dry. But if you walk by it and it looks really clear and you can't see any poly whatsoever and you take your fingers and you run along with like, you know, you touch that glitter and that glitter doesn't move and it feels stationary, it feels hard, it feels staying right there, chances are it's probably dry. Okay, so, so she's been doing it, yeah, overnight because why not? You know you're going to be... Um, successful leaving it overnight so yeah this is still kind of glossy and milky but so it's not dry but that's okay it, i know i'm going to put it under the ceiling fan and i'm going to let it dry so hey y'all in 45 minutes i covered three small items and everything you wanted to know or thought you wanted to know maybe about polying and, and how to work glittering in on that so hopefully that um will give you some you know a little bit more information on on what to do and how to do it if y'all have any questions, obviously comment later and I'll check back. I'll make sure we get this one pinned into the announcements and uh, saying, okay, y'all just help me. If people ask, hey, what about Pauline? I don't know about Pauline. Send them to this video. So I hope y'all have a good one. Thank you so much for joining us. Before we go, Pumpkin Challenge 25th, 26th, 27th. And Ashley and I will be in here tomorrow night on a Zoom call for uh, the Academy. And then Ashley has... Wednesday and Thursday. Wednesday, she's doing the sugar skull, and then Thursday, she's doing the free pumpkin barrel. And that's another thing I was just gonna say. I don't, some of you who are just joining us, y'all might not know this, uh, but if you will look on our Facebook group in announcements, we have these uh, monthly calendars for those of you, because I think some people were asking about the scarecrows. So that's a good question. Scarecrows. Don't come in until September. And I'm doing a scarecrow on the arm on September the 14th in Academy. And then I'm also doing a scarecrow on the pumpkin on Labor Day, which is the 7th. So check these out on our Facebook page. I think Ashley has them posted in announcements if, uh, you know, if you want to know uh, when something's coming up. So hope you guys have a great day. Thank y'all for joining me. Thank you for asking all those great questions because I wouldn't have thought of all of that without you guys. And uh, we'll see y'all soon. Take care.